Who's speaking, please? Hello, Richard? Oh, who's speaking, please? Hey Jack, I'm pretty good, how are you? Not too bad, thanks. Um, I'm just calling up about uh, a report that was given to us this morning about a petrol drive-off that occurred yesterday. Yeah, I've meant, to, I've meant to call you about that. I was going to call you this morning about it actually. Um, it was a difficult situation. I've, um, I literally was forced to get the petrol and I waved at the camera. I was always yeah. going to admit the whole thing. Um, I was just forced into such financial detriment that I was left with no choice. I mean, yesterday I had a suspicion that um, the police had been called on me um, for an apparent suicide risk and, and I needed to kind of get away to escape incarceration in the hospital, you know. And um, I needed, I needed um, to get away from the house and I had some things to do. I've just been so financially abused by the whole system that um, you know, that's 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 a bit of a drop in the ocean crime that I'm admitting to, um, compared to the crimes that have been done to me. You know, so I want to put my hand up for that one and say, look, I'm sorry, I did it out of desperation, and um, I have full intentions of paying it back to the um, to the um, petrol station when I can get some hands on some money. You know, but as it stands, I'm um, I'm actually. Well, today I'll be homeless. Um, this is the desperation of my situation, you know? Like, I've, I've, I've never been able to get a lawyer. I'm a rejected whistleblower, and I can't go to the police um, to report crime, you know? So, you know, the system's abused me that much that now, um, like, it, it's kind of forced me into criminality, even though I'm very transparent about it, you know what I mean? Um, the, the, the thing is, what can we do about it, like a solution to this? Because, um, you know, of course I don't want that on any record or anything. Um, I mean, I'm admitting to it and I uh, was just out of pure desperation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to though. Can you can you call the station and say I've admitted to it and you know where I am and all that kind of stuff? And can you say that um, I want to pay back the detriment, I was forced to do it and I haven't been any harm by doing it, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, so... Look, like I said, this day very early Well, I'd love to go back and pay it, and I wouldn't have done it had I had the money, you know. But um, I've just been so politically um, and systemically oppressed, especially financially. Like, over the couple of decades, I've lost probably $20 million, you know. It, it's, it's actually, it is actually a conspiracy to prevent the course of justice. And, you know, even the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet are in on it. And I'm banned at AFCA, can't go to the Australian Human Rights Commission. You know, I've, um, I've really had it tough and I've um, actually already suicided from financial oppression in 2021 and it was deemed a, f a fatal injury and they revived me. And then after they kicked me out of hospital, the abuse got worse, you know. It's a difficult situation for me to be in. I appreciate you're just a public official and a police officer doing your job. But if I try and report crime to you guys, um, you kind of vilify me for mental illness and then incarcerate me all the time. And I don't feel like I can come to you guys to report any of the stuff going on, you know? Like, like I just want to say... Yeah, it's difficult for everyone because I know the police can't um, be seen to stick up for me because, I mean, it'll, it'll blow the whistle on dozens of public officials and you're just going to get... Um, some def uh, um, retribution from other agencies or other public officials across the pond, you know? And it seems no one can stand up for me. Um, of, you know, no politician will, no, um, no police officer I haven't been able to report the crimes through, and I'm a failed whistleblower. So I'm really stuck, you know what I mean? I'm really stuck. Okay, well, we'll look. 
Well, what if what if I what if I went to the law depot of Victoria and signed a contract admitting to it and giving him a document that's signed saying as soon as I get the money I'll pay him back? Would that go a way to helping in any way? Do you think that satisfy uh, my intention to them to pay it back? You know. Okay, I, I just want... Sorry? Sorry? So you go. Yeah, okay, can you just give me the address of the uh, the address of the place? I forget which one it was. I just... I was yeah, just Wait on, so I'm just going to do this here. So, what was it? PP 276 Clive Road Berwick. Have you got their number? Um, don't have it on me, oh, that's right. I can look it up. It, yeah. yeah. Okay. <coughs> I just had another quick question while I've got you on the phone. If that's all right. If that's all right. Yeah. yeah. So um, I reckon I'm in this position because um, no government agency will ever admit that. Um, me and my former partner were together. I mean, we were together for five years, engaged to be married. And um, he um, exploited me over five years and left me homeless. And he was a multi-millionaire who um, totally exploited me. And like, he, he does owe me a fair equal settlement that's um, separation of assets, super and that kind of stuff. Um, but even the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet just won't acknowledge that. And I've, I've tried to go to AGIS who investigate ASIO, they know about it, I won't do anything. The Ombudsman won't do anything. And I feel like I'm excommunicated from the Australian government, like wholly and totally, um, for the purposes of, of covering up that man and his deceitful, corrupt ways, you know? And I just wanted to um, ask you as a member of the police force, are you willing to acknowledge that that relationship ever existed? Because that would really help um, pave the way for a settlement, you know? Um, it's a tricky one. Generally, you know, civil settlements and um, stuff of that nature isn't really something that police get involved with. Um, and like I said, it's more of a civil thing. Um, you like to get a solicitor to recognise that, I believe. Um, but yeah, for a civil settlement, that's not really something that police get involved with. Not even just to say, yes, it was a factual thing that existed? Well, there, there is a criminal aspect to it because, um, look, due to my whistleblowing, and I've protested against his treatment for a few years now, um, he was apparently done for embezzlement of a million dollars because when we were together, he, um, he sold a house for a million dollars and put it in an offshore tax haven. And I got a message on a, one of the social apps saying he's been done for embezzlement and because of that, he blames me and he wants to kill me and my dog. Um, so... You know, not only is he enacting family violence and coercive financial control, now he's been done for his own corruption and he's, he's trying to kill me, you know. And if he finds us, he'll kill us because I know he's um, been present at murders before, like in Alice Springs, there was one at Collingwood Town Flats where a, Vietnamese, a Vietnamese man was shot and um, killed and um, another one in um, uh, uh, Port... No, um, can't remember the name of the place off the top of my head but he's a criminal like he was a former drug um trafficker and um you know it's not me who's the bad guy like he's the bad guy you know and the, and the government seemed to be protecting him you know so there is criminality to it so you know can i report that i've tried but um no one's ever acknowledged it or listened to me Uh, Stefan, S-T-E-F-A-N, yeah. Isonides, I-A-S, oh, oh, hang on, I-A-S, O-N-I-D-I-S. So, it's I-A-S, O-N-I-D-I-S. 
I think. Yeah. And he's 11th, 12th, um, 70, um, 71, I think. 11th, 12th, 71. And we lived together at um, uh, 51 White Street, Parkdale. And then we lived together at 10 Rally Street, Footscray. Yeah. And um, look, I, I'm unsure. Well, from from the message I got, it, it it would be from some from him or there was someone representing him, you know, um, um, gang stalking me, you know. And if he's been done for the million dollars embezzlement, then the death threat's real, you know. So I really need to know, um, you know, was he done for embezzlement or anything, you know? Because that, well, I mean, I know he's corrupt because he put a million dollars in a tax haven, you know. Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry about the petrol thing. It's just like, it just came down to brass tacks. You know, like even today, I've, I've even got no food. You know, I don't, know, I don't actually know what I'm going to do. So I'm, I'm trying desperately to get any of my justice issues over the line with anyone. And I was actually thinking of coming into the police station today to have a, um, you know, hopefully an unbiased, um, not judgmental conversation about some factual things that have gone on, such as this thing I'm talking about now, you know. Sorry, so just spell it again. On here I've got R-O-U-Z. R-O-U-Z? Yeah, E-N-D-O-R-N. Is that not I don't think so, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that name is, but he's he's pretty tricky and deceitful. Like he he changes his um his ABN and stuff to go to Stefan or Stefan or Stephen, um, depending on who he's extorting, you know, or where he's hiding his money. Um, so he changes his name with authorities and, uh, you know, he's ungoogleable. Um, he's disappeared off the face of the earth, but he does, um, create absolute poverty for me since t 2015. And, um, and every day that I live in poverty is another day that family violence wins because he probably owes me half a million dollars, you know, and I I've been locked out of getting a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, can I report the family violence? Because it is family violence. This is what's happening for me. Sorry? This is what's happening for me. Family violence. That's exactly yeah. what's happening. Yeah. And you wanted to make a report about that, is that correct? Yes, please, yep. Yeah, okay. Um, so to report family violence, that has to be done in person. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know it makes sense, but it's just the case of I've literally been blocked out of getting any lawyer anywhere, anytime, because due to my situation, I'm, I'm kind of now infamous, you know, and no one seems to want to help me or, or they won't, um, they just refuse to help me. I, I know a very powerful lawyer called Russell Ball opposed me years ago in a malpractice case, and he's a person who advises government policy and informs the ombudsman. And I'm a failed whistleblower at the Ombudsman, you know. If he's a lawyer with that much power and influence, he could easily easily be influencing the whole legal bar, you know what I mean? Like, I've really been excommunicated, not only from the government, but from, 
from from lawyers as well. This is what's so difficult for me, you know, and I've been excommunicated, I feel like, from the police too because, you know, I, I can't report these things or I try, you know, I could try again. I have done it numerous times. Okay, are you from Cranbourne? Uh, I'm from Narrywine. Narrywine. Do, do you want me to come in and see you? So you've got a bit of a background story. Sorry, what was that? Do, would you like me to come in and see you at Narrywine to report this? So you've got a bit of a background story and no know of me, you know? Yeah, it's just whatever is closest to you, I suppose. Where are you, mate? I, I'm in Clyde, but I've got a car and hello, now I've got some petrol. I'm happy to come in and see you if you'd like to talk to me. Okay, can I just get your name and your number? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name's Jack and my number is 48158. Jack, and it was what? 148158. Four, eight. 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 What's your surname, Jack? Uh, Van Brumlin, that's a V A N. Yep. And space B R U. Yep. Double M for Mary. Yep. That's an unusual name. Brum Brummelin, okay. <laughs> well, you're going to be there this morning because I can actually drive in at any time and if you're going to be around on the floor, um, I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, I'll be around. Okay, well, you're at, we're at uh, Narry Warren Police Station. Narry Warren, yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, do you want me to bring in some evidence and stuff? Um, or just have a conversation at the start? So it's financial control. He's he's using coercive financial control, and I, I live in poverty, mate, every day, you know. And um, uh, you know, he's refused a settlement, um, and I and my lawyer dumped me. So um, I haven't been able to engage his lawyer. So um, you know, like I said, I'm a bit of a scapegoat and infamous, um, being excommunicated from the government and lawyers. So there's no possible way I can um, I can get this over the line, you know. But now he's threatened um, to, to kill me and my dog, me and my dog, for his embezzlement. Like, surely that's an issue, yeah. How long have you been in a relationship? We're in a relationship for just over five years. Five years, yeah. We're engaged to be married. Like, all friends and families witnessed the relationship and knew of it. And I just can't believe he's managed to get away with it. I mean, he's a criminal mastermind and a narcissist, and he's. He's sent out flying monkeys to kind of deny the relationship ever exists. So I just can't believe this is happening to me, you know. Um, were you ever married or was it just... Um, we are engaged to be married, but um, but we hadn't got married yet. Yeah. All right. Um, what I'll do is I'll just uh, have a chat to the sergeant and uh, I'll put you on hold for a tick and I'll get back to you and let you know. Okay, yeah, that'll be great. Okay, I'll wait here. All right. Thanks.
services. These emergency services are there to assist you 24 hours a day, every day of the year. If you need emergency assistance, call triple zero. That's triple zero.
Oh, good day. This is Rich McLean. Hello. Good day. How you going? Good. I was talking to um. Hang on, let me see. I was talking to. I, can't hear you. I was talking to Jack Van Brummel, uh, just a minute ago. I still can't hear. You. I I can't do anything about that. It's the phone. I was speaking to Jack, one of your police officers there. He was going to put me onto the sergeant. I can hear you. <coughs> um, the, the guy didn't have any troubles before hearing me. He didn't have any troubles before hearing me. And that's exactly how police get away with um, not acknowledging the whole political situation. Sorry, it's gone static. Can't hear you very well. And that's exactly the way they do it. Hello? G'day Richard. G'day. Oh yeah, I got put into someone else and they hung up. Yeah. To be fair, I haven't even come in and shown you the ample amount of evidence that I've got. Um, you, but I'm just saying from what you've given me over the phone. Um, well, the purpose of the call was to talk about petrol crime, wasn't it? It wasn't really about that, but I, I just happened to tell you because that's the key thing that's underpinning my persecution. So the police aren't going to do anything about it. They're just not going to acknowledge it. That's that's a method of torture that's been happening to me. That the government just delegitimizes um, my story and my detriment and, and won't acknowledge it in any meaningful way. That's exactly the way that I'm being oppressed. And it's no surprise that you've said that. You know what, if I had the money from the family violence and the coercive financial control, I wouldn't have been in that situation to rob the petrol, would I? Isn't there a process when reporting family violence? But it is financial violence. Family violence is also including Coercive financial control. Well, he's threatened to kill us as well. Can I report that he's threatened to kill us? Well, I'm making it. Yeah, just like I'm reporting it to you now, and nothing's ever done about it. No, but I mean, have you gone into the police station? Yes, I have. I've gone to Dandenong, and they refuse to acknowledge it, just like you didn't acknowledge the family violence that I'm reporting to you. There's, there's always a clever way to say, to, to not get the case over the line, you know what I mean? And the aim is Sorry? to cause me financial detriment. Like, that's not really fair. I'm a human being. I've got rights, you know? I've got rights, don't I? I mean, public officials, like police officers, have to act within the, the um, Public Services Charter to act ethically and responsibly to the members of the public. I just don't understand how it's been all these years, and I've never ever got the government even to acknowledge 
that that relationship ever existed, which is a, a just a basic well-known fact. What would you do if you were me? Sorry? What would you do if you were me? I'd seek I've already explained to you that I've been locked out. I'm 50 years old. I've never had a lawyer. And I get the same treatment from lawyers just being excommunicated. The same as police. The same as um, the government. The same as ombudsmen. The same as lawyers. You know, it's hard life as a scapegoat, mate, you know? Everyone just passes the buck. Like, I've been, had threats to kill. I've had threats to kill on my phone in the last week at this house, you know? And it's, it's not okay. That's usually what people say when I'm starting to make some real sense and just to get about to get something over the line and just highlight how utterly absurd it's become that I can't get any of my justice issues over the line with authorities. No, you've made it pretty clear your perspective. Thank you.